Now you guys know me as Ray Dizzle the artist. The painter. The drawer. But today I'm going to be known as Ray Dizzle the sculptor. Has a good ring to it. Now, if you're out of the loop, my buddy slash one of the biggest art YouTubers, Jazza, created his second ever art box with Smart Art. And Jazza and the company Smart Art was kind enough to send me one. It comes in three tiers, the first one being Jazza's Ink Credible Box, all about ink drawing, calligraphy, and writing. The second box, which this box is all about miniatures that he hand-selected, as well as created, that you can paint and assemble all on your own. And the third box is what we're focusing on today. Allow me to introduce you to the Jazza Sculpture Box. Now, in order for you to fully understand my sculpting experience, I thought I would show you guys a few. Now, my very first sculpting experience was back in high school. Okay, so I go to art class, right? And I'm walking and walking and then I pull up in the chair. Even though I was so dedicated to like the actual artwork in high school, that wasn't the case for sculpting. And I created this gem of a masterpiece. Ray Dizzle, self-proclaimed politician. In college, I only took one semester of ceramics and I created a few things that I thought were, you know, fine. They're pretty cute. I still to this day really like the deer head. And this brings us to present day. Even though my sculpting experience is pretty minimal, I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of skulls and the human face. Portraiture is one of my specialties. And today I'm going to sculpt my own face. With that being said, let's unbox. Big boy. Okay guys, here it is. Jazza's super sculpture box. Bask in all of its glory. All right, let's see what we are working with. Now this is a tool pouch with Jazza's face on it. The pockets come in a variety of sizes. Very nice, love that. Along with the pouch, of course, comes with a variety of sculpting tools. First of all, I just want to say I appreciate the size of this because I imagine I'm going to be getting into some really small crevices for my face. So of course, I'm going to need some sculpting tools. Speaking of which, we have a bur- ah, pumpkin, what, get out of here. As I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, we have a burrishing set. I know that you use this for a variety of reasons, like attaching clay, making textures, just all around a very universal tool. Now next up in the box, we have two brush sets. One is a silicone based brush set for smoothing things out, making it look all smooth. Uh, we also have some regular paint brushes. We got a rolling pin. I think it's pretty self-explanatory what the roller does. It rolls. <laughs> we got, oh my gosh, I know what this is. I know what this, okay. So this is a 10 piece sculpting set. Every single tool is double ended. So technically it's like 20 tools in one. We got some blades for cutting said clay. Next up, besides the tools and the clay itself, we probably have one of the most important parts of the sculpture, armature wire. Now this is basically going to be the bones of my clay, if that makes sense. It's going to make it a little bit more structurally sound and make it so I don't just like waste a giant wad of clay. We got some pastels. Uh, with the brushes that I had mentioned earlier, you can actually paint on pastels, which is a really nice art hack. And lastly, we have the three sculpting clays. We have some oven bake clay in 10 colors. We got the primaries, we got the secondaries, we got white, we got black, we got gray. Basically, the most universal colors that you can get. We have the cost clay. This is curable oven safe clay in soft. And from what I can remember on Jazza's video on this, the clay is almost like rubbery, which I feel like is really nice for getting super realistic textures. And we have a special sized monster clay. Now this is an oil-based clay, meaning that it will never dry out. You can use it over and over and over again, which is really nice. And it just so happens to be the clay that I'm gonna use. I like it because there's a lot of it. It comes in one uniform color. It melts down 
And let's be honest here, it's the most beginner friendly for a noob like myself. Are you ready for it? Bam! So here's like my basic potato. <laughs> so here's what the preparation stage of my sculpture looks like. This will soon be my face at some point, but I just needed it to be a little more sturdy than what it currently is. And uh, luckily I have a skull right here to reference from, so it all works out. Now that I got the baked potato on a stick going, <laughs> I'd like to call this phase getting down the basic structures. First, I want to make it look human-like before I make it look ray-like, if that makes sense. So add in the things that make it, make us human. So eyes, nose, lips, cheekbones. I kind of felt like a plastic surgeon, honestly, like adding in fat to like the face in different areas that I wanted to change. It was fun. Oh my god, so the scariest, scariest thing literally just happened. So just like normal, I was working on the sculpture. I was adding in fine lines, my philanthrum or whatever it's called, my eyebrows. You know, just normal stuff scraping in. Hold on, I need to calm down. It was so scary. <laughs> and I'm just going to show you what happened. Ah. Oh god. Oh god. Oh. Oh god. <laughs> oh, it was so scary. <laughs> Now I'm gonna add in probably one of the most unique features of my face and by far the most difficult thing to create, which is the eyeballs. I have a unique eye structure where it's kind of hooded, but it's like flat at the bottom. Like there's a lot of extra skin up top by the eyelids. So I'm not gonna lie, for a beginner trying to do a very unique eye shape like that, it was pretty difficult for me. Like my eye, everything was fine. Like the nose, mouth, everything was fine. But just the eyes, I struggled with so much. Eventually, I got so pissed off. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna come back to this later. I can't handle this. I'm gonna work on the next thing, which will be my hair. I didn't have a lot of extra clay to like do anything long and dramatic, so I decided to go with a bun. I mean, I'm literally wearing one right now, so it all works out. Make it drop, that's some wet, that's some wet macaroni in a pot. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so it's the next day. It's currently 3.41 in the morning. Uh, I purposely wore like a lighter makeup today because I wanted you guys to like see the comparisons. And as far as the eyes go, I ended up actually redoing them again from the very top. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt like a literal serial killer scooping out eyes of my victim. So that was weird. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not 100% happy with the eyes, but I do think it's a major improvement. And it was also kind of weird whenever I was smoothing out the skin. Smoothing is so weird because I'm just like caressing my own face. It's so weird. Ah. <laughs> Now at this point, I'm running kind of low on clay and I just decided to do some minor cleanup and just call it a day. And something I did not mention earlier is that I'm actually doing a quarantine. I'm not going to any stores or anything like that. New Mexico's numbers aren't doing too hot right now. So, you know, I'm just trying to stay safe. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I had to improvise hardcore and I ended up using the polymer clay as a headstand. Ah. 
I know what you're waiting for. Now, when I look at the side of the sculpture, you can definitely see that there's some uh, rendering issues, what we'll call them. <laughs> and a little bit of face texture. I never did fully figure out how to completely blend. So all my sculptors out there, if you have any tips on how to like fully flatten out and like blend out a face, let a girl know. But I am a little shook because when you look at it from the front and you compare it side by side, they look so similar. Not gonna lie, for my very first time ever doing any kind of sculpture besides like those two other times in college and high school, I kind of went off. And to be honest, I feel like a huge help was the quality tools and the clay and everything that came inside of this box. Shout out to you, Jazz, for creating such a really good box. If you're interested in this or any of the other boxes, I will leave everything down below. I have been putting so much more into my videos and the quality and editing lately, and my upload schedule is becoming more and more erratic, so don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you can always get notified. And yeah, with that being said, guys, thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you next video. Bye!